You may be seated. Open your Bibles to Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 2. Now, I want to talk to you today about a subject that is a conviction of my heart. I want to talk to you. We're, we're doing a series in Jesus' life of the unexpected happening. This setting in Mark 2, and I won't take time to read the whole text, in verses 1 down through verse 12, an unexpected thing happens. It happened, it was Simon Peter's house or his mother-in-law's house that they were meeting in in Capernaum. Now Capernaum was the northern headquarters of Jesus' ministry. He had been there, performed many miracles. He's just coming back into the city, goes into either Simon Peter's house or his mother-in-law's. They had the two biggest houses in town. Somebody say, it's okay to be blessed. They had the two biggest houses in town. So Jesus always made his headquarters in one of those houses. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2 and straightway, verse 2, many that were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door And Jesus preached what? The Word. Somebody say, the Word cannot fail. Jesus preached the Word unto them. And there came unto Him, bringing one sick of palsy. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment on the power of a God connection. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad I'm connected. When God created your life, He never created you to do life alone. We say that to you often. But saints, listen. God does not want you isolated. In your pain, you have a tendency to isolate. You all look funny. How many beside me would say, when you're going through something, sometimes you would just like to get by yourself? See, the devil knows he can whip you if you isolate. But if you are connected right, he can't destroy you. I told a a minister this week, who was going through something, was on the phone together. I said, realize this, and I don't say this lightly, hell's already tried me, I got the scars. And I said, before the devil can get to you, he's got to come through me. Because I promised you I'd be your covering. So I said, son, lift up your head, because the devil is defeated. Come on, somebody. Somebody in here has got to know God is connecting you to EP because we're the incubator of miracles. This house believes, practices miracles. We don't just talk about it. We practice it. We don't just teach about it. We practice supernatural miracles. Miracles. The Bible says, you know, and I, I, I know and I'm fixing to, some of y'all are going to say, now nah, he's getting into heresy. But hear me through before you say that. The Bible does not say that God will not put more on you than you can bear. You say, oh, yes, it does. Well... Let's look at the whole context. Because this week I was studying the Word of God and God said, 
I did not say if you're standing alone that he will not allow more to come upon you than you're able to stand. But if you're connected to first, Almighty God. Secondly, if you're connected to right people, you will not ever have an experience that's more than you're able to bear. Are y'all with me? The power of a God connection. Now, I've lived it. This is not something I just thought about. I live this text today that God is a faithful God to see you through every situation if you're connected. Now, the problem is we've got dysfunctional people sitting on church pews that are not connected. Everything is in place, but they're not connected because of whatever. Somebody hurt them. Somebody said something to them. So the devil is using all of that garbage of the past to try to keep us from connecting. Look at your neighbor and say, God created you for connection. Now, look at your notes real quickly. Number one, too many are present but not connected. Somebody say present but not connected. Now listen to me. I work off of an iPad. Now I'm not Pastor Dustin Ray who is a geek. I barely know how to cut it on. And if something messes up, I have his cell number. But I never will forget, because my iPad now, and I use it every day. It's how I communicate with our missionaries. It's how I communicate with pastors. That's how I communicate through all that I'm involved in. It's through my iPad. So it can be 100% in the morning and zero by night in its power. Because I work it. I don't just look at it and say, well, that's a nice toy. I work it. So I was down in the red on power. So I went to bed. I plugged it in in my office, went to bed. I got up the next morning, went in there to get my iPad to go to work, and it was red. Now you say, if you plugged it in, why did it not charge? Because I didn't connect it. I plugged it in, but it's getting old. Now you have to push when you plug it in. I'm not going to say that. I thought about saying it. Some of y'all have to be. Well, anyway. So, it had the wire, it had the electricity, it had the instrument, the iPad, but it was not charged. Some people come to Elevation Point, sit on the church seats, everything is present. The wire, the power, the praise, the worship, the anointing. The supernatural, and they leave on red. Everything is present, but they're not plugged in. They're not connected. They 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 come to church, they really enjoy the band, the music, Dr. D's worship, they love it all, and they even kind of like my screaming. But they've never connected. So the devil keeps pounding at their life. You know what God said to me today? Is a day for you to say, enough is enough. I'm 
plugging in to the power. My God, I don't want you to leave here the same way you came in. I want you to plug in to the power. Make the connection. I was so mad at my iPad. Because it takes, my iPad charges slow. It's not like my phone. My phone charges real quick. My iPad is slow. The reason I plug it in when I go to bed, it takes all night. So there I was all day without my tool. Some people got to understand Some of you are going to have to stay plugged in for a while. You've been through this, and you've been through that, and you've been through something else, but i got good gospel news for you today. You're at the right place at the right time to get connected to His power. Second thing on your notes. Palsy is head and body not working together. Now, somebody that has palsy, like this man here in Mark 2, doesn't mean they're stupid. Doesn't mean they're ignorant. They're smart. But when the signal is given from the head, the body doesn't do it. Doesn't mean the body's bad. There is some kind of communication between the head and the body. See, some of y'all smart. Y'all already know where I'm going. See, when Jesus, the head, gives an order to the body, the body must act. Hello? Faith is action. Faith is you doing something. Are you with me? You say, well, I have faith. Let me see your faith. The Bible said, I'll know your faith by your works, your actions. Let me take it just a little deeper. Hang on. Some of you don't need to put your seatbelt on. There's only one head in this church. He happens to have the microphone. He is God's set man. Come on, if we're going to do God's business, we're going to do God's order. I learned a long time ago as an apostle that you got to put things in God's order. People say, well, hallelujah, praise the Lord, shikha mashana mashida. But unless they get their life in order, Come on, somebody, y'all looking strange at the apostle. No, God says, get your life in order, and the blessing will chase you down. The blessing will overtake you. So, when you come to this house, connect to this power, you're going to be blessed because you're in a place that does it in biblical order. Hello? Hello? The saints has been around me for a while. They're nodding their head and saying amen. Because they know we do things in God's order. And when there is disorder, there is dysfunction. And the blessing leaves. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. So, we got to understand. When an order is given from the head of a P, the body says, we're marching. We're taking territory. We're doing what God called us to do. Folks, this is not our final place. If you all think this room here is our final vision, you don't know me yet. And and I'm going to tell you, I already hear bulldozers running. I hear trees falling. I hear steel going up. God's saying, it's time to expand. Expand your borders. Expect God to do something bigger. Expect God to do the unusual. And I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm 68. I'm not doing five services a weekend. 
I'm going to do one in a big building that y'all going to build. Come on, saints. It's time for us to say to this city, to these counties, we're not playing church. We're taking territory. We're redeeming the lost. We're preaching the miracle gospel. Look at your neighbor and say something big's about to happen. Something big's about to happen. God's about to do something in your life. you got to come to the place where you understand it's time to refuse to be paralyzed. This paralyzed man heard Jesus was in town. The good thing is he had four friends. He had four friends. Let me get let me get some friends. I got any friends here? Give me. Come on. Give me. Come on, brother. You look strong and powerful. Come on, brother. You always have to have one woman in every man's situation. Y'all just stand here and look at this crowd. If I'm paralyzed. I need some connections. If I need a miracle, I can't take myself to where I want to go. Some of you got to realize you can't get where you want to go by yourself. That's why God connected you. You can't get where you want to go, so God set you in the house. See, you got to understand the poorest you're ever going to be is today. So that turn looks sanctified. I said the lowest your checking account is, is today. Because you're connecting to the power. Now, if I'm paralyzed and I got four friends who will not forsake me in my trouble. Because we're plugged in. Come on, somebody. You're at the right place at the right time. You're plugged in. And when you face a problem and you need a miracle, they're going to be there. I said they're going to be there. They're not going to run just because there's a problem. If I, if I needed a miracle, I know his number. I call him and say, hey, bud, can you come and help me? Let me tell you, he'll come and help me because he's my friend. He'd, come, he'd get up in the middle of the night and come to me because he's my friend. I want you to begin to put a value on those that God connects you to. When God connected us, and give us that connection. It's not so we can say we're connected. It's so we can say, I need a miracle. Can y'all help get me to my miracle? See, if I am in trouble, I want somebody handsome like this. Good looking. I'm feeling his biceps right now. I want him by my side. Are you listening to me? He looks good, and he's got the tiger in his eye. That says, if the devil messes with my pastor, I'm coming after him. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? He's a wrestler. So God said, I'm, I'm going to change your world today, Mr. Paralyzed Man. I'm going to rock your world. And it's not by yourself. Four friends are going to come and help me. Thank you all. Put your hands together and give these people a praise. God bless you. Thank you for helping me. Look, look at number three. The blessing of right connection. The blessing of right connection is those four people made a cot, put the paralyzed man on it, and said, we're going to Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your day for a miracle. Come on, look at somebody else and say, did you hear me? It's your day for a miracle. See, 
when you understand there is a day, you just get up, it's a normal day, but in the process, it's miracle day. Some of y'all didn't know it when you was putting your makeup on this morning, getting your hair all perfect, getting your pretty clothes on. This is your day for a miracle. The Bible says those four men carried him to Jesus. Do you know sometimes I've had to have people carry me? Are you listening to me? I was hurting. I was down. I was beat up. I'd gone through a setback in my life. And my friends came. Put their arm. I had one guy, if I call his name, he's nationally known. He's on television all the time. Got a plane ticket when he heard about it in Dallas. Flew to Atlanta. Come to my house and said, just want to tell you, you're not alone. Can I tell somebody, when you connect to this house, you're not alone. We're going to chase you down. We're going to love on you. We're going to tell the devil, get his hands off of you. And we're going to decree a blessing that's going to overtake your life. It's powerful when you get the right connections. Look at your neighbor and say, the right connections. Now, keep on your notes. I've got to hurry. Look at number four. How you handle challenges decides your destiny and other people's destiny. The Bible said in my text today, they got to Jesus, and when they got there, the place was jammed. Have you ever went to eat somewhere? You had it all pictured in your mind. Dr. D and I did this recently. I was just craving the taste of that food. Got there. They were stacked out the door, sitting outside, and cars were stacked in there. I said, well, I am an impatient man. And I ain't waiting in that line. So I went and just got a sandwich, went on my way. Can you imagine it was miracle day? They got the palsy man, the paralyzed man, to the door where Jesus was at. Somebody say, almost to the miracle. I mean, they could hear his voice, but they couldn't get to him. The good thing is, when it's four people like these four that were standing here with me, They say, well, a challenge, that's no problem. We'll solve the problem. You're still going to get your miracle. Can I just tell somebody, when you plugged into this house, you connected to this ministry, you connected to our lives, you face a challenge, you can't get it through, come on, we're going to make it. I said, we're going to make it. The Bible said, now this... This is the kind of guys and gals I want around me. They looked at the situation paralyzed. They heard Jesus talking about miracles. They knew if they could get their friend inside to Jesus, it'd be a miracle day. Everything was in place except except they couldn't get him there. But a good group of people doesn't take an option. I said, they don't take an option. They don't say, well, come back another day. We'll try to catch him next month. They said, this is your day. One of them looked at the other one, said, if I can stand on your shoulders, you put me up on the roof, we'll tear the roof off. Now, wouldn't you like to have been Simon Peter that owned that house? The four friends saying, we're fixing to tear the roof off. So one friend got up on the shoulder of another friend, got up on the roof. In those days, it was like they'd put straw, mud, straw, mud, straw, baked so hard it was like concrete. So the one guy gets up there and says, okay, I'm up here. I need some help. The other guy says, I'm coming up. 
that I got a question. He's paralyzed. He's on a stretcher. How are we going to get him up there? I'm fixing to get real interested in your life. Sometimes you may have to suffer a little bit getting to your miracle. Because I believe they took the crippled man, tied belts around him, and said it won't be long. It may be a little painful, but we're about to get you Jesus. See, some of y'all got to understand, sometimes when we're helping you get your miracle, you got to stretch. And you got to stretch. Sometimes there'll be a little discomfort. But don't quit. We're about to get our miracle. The Bible said, now I want you to see this, and I'm hurrying to close. The Bible says they begin to beat on that roof, tearing it up, tearing it up. Now, Jesus is inside. The people that own the house is sitting at Jesus' feet. They hear noises. Then the noise gets louder. And then all of a sudden, dust starts coming down on Jesus. He's looking up going, my God, what's, what's happening? Somebody was about to get their miracle. Can I just tell somebody real quick, you're about to get your miracle. We're not here just filling in a slot. You're about to get your miracle. I said somebody is going to get really plugged in, not just have everything, but plugged in, and the miracles are going to start flowing. So suddenly it's going to overtake you one blessing on another blessing on another blessing. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, what used to take a month will take a week. What used to take a week will take a day. What used to take a day We'll take an hour. What used to take an hour, take a minute. Somebody say, suddenly. And about that time, they punched a hole in the roof. Jesus looked up and said, I'm not sure what's going on, Peter. It sounded like they're tearing up your roof up there. And he went on teaching. They tore a hole big enough that they let the paralyzed man down. Into the presence of Jesus. Now let me give you point five. And I'm out of your way. Number five. The tragedy of logic and reasoning must never be in your life. The tragedy of logic and reasoning. It was beyond logic for them to tear a hole in somebody's roof. But they said, we'll pay for the roof later. We need a miracle. Our friend needs a miracle. And the Bible said Jesus looked up and saw their faith. Somebody say their faith. He didn't see the palsy man's faith. He saw their faith. He saw these four people stand down. He saw their faith. You know why God connected you to Elevation Point? So you could get your miracle. Some churches you go to, they don't even practice miracles. If they pray for you, it would be something like this. Oh, eternal celestial God, if it be thy will. When God's already showed us the will in the book. I don't have to pray if it's God's will to heal my body. God said, by his stripes, I am healed. I don't have to pray if it's God's will to bless me and prosper me. God's already said it pleasures him to prosper me. So I'm not going to, you're not going to be connecting to people that says, well, if it be thy will, we already know the will. The will of God, you're going to get blessed coming in. You're going to get blessed going out. You're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be above and not beneath. Your treasury is going to be full. Read your Bible. He said, when you make the connection, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. I had a miracle happen this week. I'm going to tell you in brief what it was. We've worked on it for a year and a half with a dear friend of over 35 years. 
It will connect this ministry into 170 countries of the world. Every time we got to the door, it was closed. We couldn't get through it. My friend kept saying, you are going to get your miracle. Somebody say a friend. I'm not talking about somebody says they're a friend. I'm talking about true, blue, loyal friend. So he called Monday, and he said, if they don't call you in two days, you let me know. I will get a plane ticket if I have to. You're going to get your miracle. In less than 24 hours, Dr. D got the email, signed it, and sent it back. Because God said, I'm a miracle worker. Are you listening to me? God's about to make a miracle happen for you. There's things God's about to do that's going to blow your mind. Don't let your logic, don't let your logic rob you of what God is about to do. I thank my friend. I said, thank you so much for standing on top of that. He said, what are friends good for? You know what happens when you connect here? We're not going to let go of you because you face a problem. We're not going to turn our back on you because you face a challenge. But we're going to say, the challenge, we'll walk through it with you. We'll see God do the impossible. And all we're asking you to do is connect. Connect. That's the reason we have church membership here. is so people can officially become a church member. Really connect. Not a bystander. Not just somebody looking on as a spectator. But somebody who connects. If you're not an official member, stop by out there and become an official member. In just a few days, we're going to be streaming. We're going to open up membership to the whole world. I said, we're going to open up membership to the whole world. We're going to be the largest country church in the world. They say, how big is Loganville? I said, oh, about 15,000. How big is your membership? 40,000. Hello, somebody. It's God's time. I said, it's God's time. Look at your neighbor and say, we're getting connected. I'm not sure they heard you say it again. We're getting connected. Plugged in to the power of God. Would you stand with me, please? Did y'all get anything out of the Word today?